Good morning, Queenslanders. Welcome to an OCC Queensland Daily Weather Wrap today, the 23rd of the 2nd, 2023. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update brought to you by TownsvilleSheds.com. Check them out if you're in the market for a shed safe accredited shed. We saw that increase in southeasterly strain showers coming onto the southeast Queensland coastline. It's a weak surface trough came onto the coast, and particularly on the Sunshine Coast this morning, we're seeing quite widespread shower activity pushing up into parts of the Wide Bay coastline as well. We're going to see that little surface trough track inland a little today, and we're going to increase our instability levels across the eastern and interior. A few showers up around the Mackay coastline, a few showers in the towns of the Cairns coastline end up through the Daintree. To the north here, you'll notice there's a weak circulation associated with a weak low pressure system, about 200 kilometres or 250 kilometres north-northeast of Cooktown. That low is not doing much and it's not moving much over the next 24 hours or so. Uh, the expectation also that we're going to see increasing shower activity and possible thunderstorm activity through the Torres Strait and parts of Cape York Peninsula in the next 24 hours. Thanks to the Bureau of Meteorology, our best rainfall over the past 24 hours has been around Cape York Peninsula. You can see falls in excess of 50 millimetres scattered across the Cape and even out to Mornington Island just offshore off the uh, Gulf Coastline. We've also seen substantial shower activity in the Cassery Coast, the Mackay with Sundays Coastline and the, as I mentioned, the Sunshine Coast in particular of South East Queensland. Looking at our winds over the next 24 to 36 hours, we can see South Eastleys firmly entrenched across Queensland's coastline and particularly uh, a little bit more enhanced on the south side of that weak circulation to the north of Cape Melville. The expectation is that we're going to maintain that South Eastley flow throughout the day today into tonight and then into tomorrow as well. You can see South Eastleys dominating the state on the east coast. You'll also notice as we go into tomorrow, we're increasing our northwesterly winds in the tip of the Cape and also through the Torres Strait Islands. So get set for some pretty rugged uh, water conditions and wind conditions out there in the Torres Strait as the monsoon redevelops across the far north. From a rainfall perspective, we're increasing our shower activity through the day and extending it inland across central east and southeast inland Queensland. So you can see just there on the coast and then just starting to push it inland as the afternoon progresses. We're also seeing a few showers in the uh, northeastern regions just inland of the coastline as well, plus enhanced shower activity between Ingham and Innisfail. On top of that, we're expecting to see widespread shower and thunderstorm development up around the Cape and particularly in the border regions of the Gulf Country in Queensland. A fair bit of drier air through the other parts of the Gulf Country, just limiting the convection to some degree. As we push into the later afternoon evening, you can see the showers and isolated thunderstorms breaking down across the eastern interior and we see shower activity particularly focused again on the coastline. A little bit of an enhancement of shower activity around the northeast New South Wales Gold Coast and a particular enhancement across northeast. Queensland associated with that southeasterly flow on the south side of that weak circulation, just getting squeezed along a little bit. The monsoon, as I mentioned, starts to develop tomorrow across the northern parts of the Cape, and we will start to see some monsoonal squall lines beginning to develop and push into that northwest Cape region. Uh, so that's a, a big talking point if you live in North Awepa. Accumulated rainfall between now and tomorrow morning. We can see some substantial shower activity coming onto the north tropical coastline. Obviously, there's patches of the coast that will miss out, as they always do. Uh, notice that there's a little bit of a gap there in between Townsville and, say, Bowen, where a lot of the showers tend to be moving parallel to the coastline. I'm sure there's still some isolated activity there, as the model suggests. And you can see some shower activity around the Mackay with Sunday's coast, and then that enhancement of shower activity around the central Queensland region as that surface trough comes inland. And notice also the potential for some isolated convective activity over inland areas as well and once again that Gold Coast region just seeing an increase in shower activity uh, particularly in the evening and night time hours tonight and we wait in anticipation for the monsoon redevelopment across the far northern Cape which should happen tomorrow but in the meantime lots of showers and storms up there in the northern Cape as we wait for that to happen. For more details on anything we've spoken about today, head over to join.ozcyclonechasers.com.au, support our work, become a subscriber, and we talk a lot more in depth about everything we talked about today. Plus, we're looking further ahead in a very complex atmospheric pattern across the far northern parts of Australia, and it, that includes the Northern Territory and Northern WA as well. Thanks for watching this video. I'll have a chat to you again in the morning.